Thank you, Madam Chairman. I, I might point out that uh, Canada's pre-pandemic uh, GDP growth was 39% lower than the United States. Their unemployment rate 60% higher and their average wage is 38% lower. Bringing their economy to ours for some reason doesn't seem terribly appealing to me, but that may be just me. Madam Chairman, the crisis on our southern border that's been produced by President Biden's executive orders is continuing unabated and unaddressed. The uh, Border Patrol reports well over 1 million encounters with illegal migrants just since the beginning of this year. The number of unaccompanied minors in Border Patrol custody has grown tenfold since last year. The Mexican crime cartels are reportedly making more money in human trafficking than they are in drug trafficking. Uh, FBI FBI Director Ray confirmed last month that uh, this unprecedented influx includes criminal elements that uh, are enforcing staggering debts owed by the migrants to the cartels, including through indentured servitude, that is slavery. Meanwhile, the Immigration Subcommittee continues to ignore this crisis. Committee Republicans have begged the majority to have hearings on this unfolding catastrophe, and I make that request again today. Meanwhile, Americans are paying the price, both as taxpayers uh, and as employees. The continuing theme we hear from the left is that despite these jaw-dropping numbers and despite the impact on American families as the labor market is flooded with low-wage illegal immigrant workers, we need to encourage still more mass migration. At our first hearing, the Republican witness documented the tremendous negative impact that illegal immigration has had on African-American communities. As Peter Kersenow stated, not only do illegal immigrants compete for jobs with African-Americans, but that competition drives down wages for the jobs that are available. At our second hearing, we learned how flooding the market with low-wage labor does enormous economic harm to working families. We also heard how many guest worker programs allow employers to fill positions at wages substantially less than the domestic labor market would otherwise command. As I noted then, this is at the expense of working Americans whose wages stagnated for decades as the immigrant share of the population tripled. Today, we'll hear from Dr. Roniel Hera of the damage done to American workers, and by the way, to foreign workers as well, through abuses in guest work programs like H-1B, uh, L-1, and the optical practical training uh, program, and how despite assurances of the left, pay far below the market rates for labor and, and displace skilled American workers. Now, this has resulted in continuing scandals as skilled American workers have been ordered to train their foreign replacements as a condition of receiving severance pay, including major corporations like Southern California Edison, Siemens, Disney, AT&T, and the University of California. Under the OPT program, Employers don't have to pay payroll taxes if they hire foreign nationals here on student visas for 29 months after graduation. If you know a college graduate who has a science, technical engineering, or mathematics degree who can't find an entry-level job, you need look no further than this discriminatory program. Let me make very clear what the Democrats are advocating. It comes from the Senate testimony of Leo Pereira, who lost his job at Disney because of these abuses. Folks, listen carefully because his experience could well be yours if the Democrats prevail. This is what he said. I walked into a small conference room with about two dozen highly respected fellow IT workers. The Disney executive made a harsh announcement to us all. All of you in this room will be losing your jobs in the next 90 days. Your jobs have been given over to a foreign workforce. In the meantime, Okay. You will be training your replacements until your jobs are 100% transferred over to them. And if you don't cooperate, you will not receive severance pay. Will, uh, Mr. Chairman, questions. American citizens trust this Congress to look out for them when, they're, when they cast their votes every two years. Yet this Congress has made very clear, both through its actions and its inaction that it places Americans last and it places foreign labor and the big corporations that shamelessly exploit it first. The Trump administration issued regulations aimed at reforming programs like H-1B to stop these abuses and protect jobs and wages for Americans. 
It's no accident that these policies accompanied the strongest wage growth for American workers in 40 years, the lowest unemployment rate in 50 years, and the lowest poverty rate in 60 years. The Biden administration and the Democrats in Congress are busy reversing these policies and not coincidentally reversing the gains that Americans had won. I look forward to the testimony today. I hope that my colleagues and I can come to an agreement to, to do what's best for American workers by reforming the guest worker programs that we've allowed to run amok. I yield back. 